Lately, we've heard heaps about Australian values and Australian men, including the scandalous claim that the good old-fashioned, straight-talking Aussie bloke is dead, gone forever. A victim of the metrosexuals and the politically correct. Well, I've got good news for you. The True Blues singlet Aussie's very much alive, thriving, in fact. His name is Kenny. He lives in Melbourne's western suburbs and he's very big in the waste disposal business. He's also the star of one of the funniest, most successful Australian movies in a long, long time. And now this working class hero is about to take on the world. See, there's another classic example. Someone having a two inch arsehole and us only having installed one inch piping. Kenny Smythe is an unlikely hero. Well, I reckon we put the toilet in the wrong spot. He does one of the dirtiest jobs around. He's a Portaloo plumber. As much as people think you're covered in sitting piss, you're not. It's 85 per cent of its water. You'll find him working tirelessly behind the scenes at big events. Making sure everything is, well, running smoothly. Pretty lonely old job, this. We're here before the crowds get here, and we're the last to leave. It's a thankless job, but Kenny does it with pride and cheerful resignation. Parents look at me, you know, and say, well, that's not, not much of a job, is it? Did you wish you did something else? I said, well, you were kids. You spent the first two years handling this, this. You work getting paid for less. It's Kenny's mix of good humour and homespun philosophy that struck a chord with cinema audiences around the country. His movie is the most successful Australian comedy in years, and Kenny is now a star. So, Kenny, here are all the people that are seeing your film. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> Kenny is the guy next door. When's Kenny two? Kenny number two. <laughs> yeah. It's all of us, and I think that's why people connect with him so well, is because he's all of us. We all know Kenny. Bloody brilliant film. Thank Phenomenal you, mate. film. Oh, thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, good on you. Oh, you want cut off, do you? Oh, Have you been surprised by the reaction to the film? Well, it's overwhelming. Did you sign the real thing, mate? Yeah, of course I will. <laughs> Dad, it's nine, though. You know, when we started talking about this, I mean, we never, ever imagined this film would be what it is today. So where are you headed, dude? Well, I'm at the Pooh Convention. There must be an awful lot of money and crap, huh? That, well, yeah, well, to be quite honest, there's a shitload of it. <laughs> now, this may come as a shock, but Kenny is not a real person. With a big hit on your hand, you should be mobbed by now. I know, well, the good thing is I don't get noticed that much. He's a character created by part-time actor Shane Jacobson. And you're very much Shane now. The point at which Kenny will come into your body... Yes, when I get taken when, over. <laughs> ..is when? Well, as soon as, I, as soon as I put the overalls and the shirt on, it starts to happen. Mm -hmm. I start to get the tingle. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys wait here, I'll just go and grab Penny for you, if that's all right. You won't be long. The transformation is quick. Hey, boys. And convincing. <laughs> so convincing, people feel they can pour their heart out to Kenny. I'm in the industry as well. Well done. Oh, thanks. I'm I'm thank you very much. Are you surprised at the number of people who don't realise that you're an actor? This is a role you're playing. We are surprised. We are. And there's a large percentage of people that, that think Kenny's real. Do you think, oh, I don't want to make a fool of them, I don't yeah. want them to feel silly? Um... Yeah, that's that's the hard bit. Uh, I would be very pained to think that somebody felt cheated because in the end, Kenny turns out to be me playing Kenny, but we mean everything that Kenny means and and I the heart of what Kenny's trying to put on the screen and the story, like we mean every bit of it. And uh, today there's going to be over 150 odd thousand people cramping here. So today I'm going to have to ask for 273% out of you. Kenny is so believable because he's inspired by Shane's own personal experiences. A few years back he worked in the entertainment industry. And after seeing the often farcical daily dramas of the Portaloo plumbers, Shane and brother Clayton smelt an opportunity. And I sort of said to Shane, why don't we um, get the camera out and just, you know, get you to bring one of the yeah. trucks around from work and we'll put you in a pair of overalls and just start filming and see where it goes. It was good. The only problem with that one, it felt like you were anticipating me coming up. 
I thought it would be something that, at best, we'd show our uncles, you know, and our, and yeah. and our family. Yeah, we a gonna, Christmas yeah, film. Yeah, hang, yeah. A sheet on, hang a sheet on the lounge room wall on Christmas Day and get all the uncles home. And they got me out there shooting this in the wild of his lounge room. Hey, we spent a fortune on this film, didn't we? The brothers had a camera, enthusiasm and a good idea, but needed an authentic location. From the outset, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Enter yeah. Glenn Pruska, boss of Splashdown, a real-life Portaloo business. As far as a dunny goes, yeah. it's a classy effort. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, we like it. And we um, get a lot of repeat business, I guess. People keep coming back. <laughs> which, which is where I thought it was supposed to go. Glenn not only gave them access to his fastidiously maintained loos, he backed it up with cold, hard cash, almost a million dollars to finance the film. It was... um. Certainly a risk when you think that the industry doesn't have a huge success rate, unfortunately. Uh, unknown actor, director that's never done a feature film, the accountant saying, don't do it. But it was a gut instinct. I felt it was worth doing. These guys are worth backing and, uh, and what a result. Well, you know all about gut instincts. <laughs> we would inside and outside. <laughs> You got a couple of items to fix. Glenn scored a cameo for his efforts, but his more important role was as technical advisor, drawing on countless bizarre anecdotes from his years in the Dunny game. Um, she's just that one over there. What's she done? She's lost her ring, her wedding right. ring down the toilet. Yes. And she wants us to get it out, so what do you do? Just bung your hand down there and grab it, and as soon as you're done, we'll wash her, you know, her ring, obviously, in your hand, it'll all be over. It's How over. often would somebody drop their ring down the dunny? Oh, goodness me, that's happened a number of times. Truly? Yeah, and we'll get a call across the radio, and I'll send the troops in for the rescue. <laughs> I reckon I could fill it with gloves if I had some gloves. Oh. Mate, you've got to take my word for it. If it's one thing I know, if you put the gloves on, you're not going to feel the ring. <laughs> is it a glove or no glove um, operation? Definitely no glove. Is that right? Yeah, well, you can't feel it. It takes away the sense in your, in your fingers. And uh, have you got any uh, Indonesian foods or curries? Do you really ask if curries are going to be served? Oh, you've got to. We did a show called Spice Bazaar. You want to work on that one? <laughs> Look at that, hey? What kind of curry has that bloke been eating? Ray Charles would be a better driver than you. The film is proudly working class, and so too is Shane and Clayton's family. It's this blue collar heritage that inspired Kenny. Cousins Bill and Ken Jacobson run a compost collection business, and they provided a living, breathing template for Kenny. Where would you want to be on a day like today, except sun blinded, oh, in a garbage truck? Oh, Jesus. These are blokes blokes and proud of it. They've always said that Australian men are starting to lose their image, you know, metrosexuals and all that. Well, I think that we've found our skin. This is us. This is where we are. No gorilla. Oh. I think a lot of people are genuinely glad to see us. See? I mean, what's better than this? Wind blowing in your face. Dust Billy, flying everywhere. Billy's asthma playing up again. <laughs> this is paradise, buddy. Action! Their family not only inspired the film, it provided half the cast. Without the budget to pay professional actors, Shane and Clayton roped in the entire Jacobson clan. I didn't put you through school for you to become fucking glorified turd burglar, and that's all you fucking will ask. I'm a plumber, I'm a plumber. Oh, plumber my ass. They're all in the film. Old man Ron, Shane's nephew Jesse, sister Kim, sister-in-law Vic, even Ian, the pommy brother-in-law, gets a run. What you got to understand is there is a smell in here that is going to outlast religion. The Jacobson family is clearly a, a colourful family. Mm, yeah, and colourful. very cheap performers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How is it wrangling a family for a film? I mean, well, was that hard work sometimes? Well, I've got to say that it was... Uh, no, it's actually pretty easy because, you, you know, it's, you, you haven't got that problem of you know where they are and uh, <laughs> you're usually hearing on the grapevine as to what they're doing the following weekend or what have you. And it was also a chance for everyone to have, you know, ha have a bit of fun with their, themselves as well. We're all playing really exaggerated versions of ourselves. It's really quite simple. 
Yeah. Might be simple for you. See that? It'd be like trying to put marshmallow into a money box. Now, I'm not going to use it. I'm telling right, you. Well, no, Dad's yeah. nowhere near that bad. Dad's nowhere near that bad. His backside, which yeah. you see in the film, is that bad. Yes. Bloody tubes up the nose and up the arse. Now they want bloody stool. <laughs> and she said, I just went to see the movie. And I said, uh, Janine, I hope you never looked at my bottom in that hospital scene. And she said, yes, so I did. Ads. She said, yes, I did, because it's got less wrinkles in your face. <laughs> They're not professional actors, but the Jacobsons are all born performers. Dad Ron grew up as a circus kid in Melbourne's western suburbs, and he certainly doesn't mind the limelight. The only kid of 10 years of age in Maribyrnong that had his own set of teeth was a tourist. I've always had this fascination for my own family history. My father and, and his brothers grew up in a tent. They were a carnival fam family, a carny family, and my grandfather died when my dad was about eight, and they sold up the carnival and then lived in the tent. And my father lived in a tent with his brother and sister and mother until he was 23 years of age. The tent may have folded years ago, but the circus rolls on. You would think that a bloke like me that had been brought up with a carnival would, would never be robbed again. I went to the Royal Melbourne show one day and there's a statue there of Ned Kelly. And, and it says, put 20 cents in the slot. And I thought, oh, well, they're going to tell me all about Ned Kelly. And I put the 20 cents in the slot and the statue went, ha, 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 you've just been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I've got to say that the language is brilliant because I think that actually strangely enough we all know a bit of that language. Yeah. Mm. It is a part of us. Yeah it's not a new language it's like when people hear it I, some people have said to us that they kind of feel like they're you know rediscovering an old friend an old mate you know what I mean? Now, see that makes no sense whatsoever. You'll know, you'll know the front from the back the front will have a door in it you dickhead. I'll tell you what all I want from you pair of buffalo headed bastards on this trip is for us to see the sun come up and be there when the sun goes down. People felt as though the Australian character had sort of been taken away. And by bringing this language back, they thought it, it had returned. Yeah, it's come back from holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if my son ended up doing this job, I don't think I'd be that upset by that. Kenny is on the way to becoming an Australian icon. What resonates with so many is that these blokes aren't laughing at the battlers, they're laughing with them. It's heartfelt and fair dinkum. They leave the bull dust to Hollywood. I enjoy watching all other films, but at the end of the day, what happens is, you know, the guy in the suit with the sports car kind of meets the good-looking girl and they win tats lighter and they head off on this massive boat that we could, you know, never dream of affording. But the thing with Kenny is at the end of the film, if people are cheering for Kenny to just keep doing what you're doing, mate, keep plumbing, we want you out there doing what you're doing, that celebrates, I mean, all of my friends, all of our friends, you know, all 95% of Australia. Hey, hey, while it's early days yet, the Jacobson brothers stand to do all right out of their film. Not bad for a couple of blokes who set out to make a glorified home movie. The word excellent comes to mind. But they promise they're not going to let it all go to their heads, no matter what's in the pipeline. Well, the irony here is that you two may go on to be incredibly successful beyond what any Kenny might have imagined. You guys could end up being millionaires. Wouldn't hurt, but it's not important. I'm willing to see yeah. if I'd be comfortable you, with it, but I don't If it happens it. to us, we'd like to have a go at it to find out whether it's any yeah. good or not. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.